Hey, uh, YouTubers, Tazman here, bringing you another episode of Learn JavaScript with Foundry VTT. And I'm not going to say it. I'm really tempted to say, as promised, we're going to talk about promises today. But no. Uh, so this is the promises reader part. I don't know if that's how you would say it in French or whatever. I never took French. Um, but anyway, we're going to go over the uh, promises and we're using the same example that we did with callbacks. As you can see, we're still in Foundry version 10, build 291. And as I mentioned in the last episode, I did switch from the enhanced or advanced macro editor back to the regular macro editor because mostly one reason. It has line numbers. I don't know why the other one doesn't. Um, seems a little weird. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on our promises one here and I will go ahead and paste in some information about promises. So let's go ahead and grab this right here, control, actually let's first before I forget, let's grab our actual um, little character code or whatever it is. Go ahead and shift tab that. Technically, this other one should be shift tabbed again. And it doesn't have to be. This is JavaScript, not Python. It's not as critical. Um, and then let's go ahead and copy my little comment for promises. Go ahead and put some carriage returns there. Go ahead and stick this in. And let's go ahead and read what promises are. So promises, uh, they were invented basically to solve the problems of callback hell and to better handle our tasks. So that's why promises were invented. Um, unfortunately, uh, they kind of created their own issues too as well uh, that made coding a little confusing as well. Not as confusing, but still a little bit bad. Uh, so promises uh, have three different states, and I've talked about this before. We have a pending state, we have a resolved state, and we have a rejected state. Um, so anytime you make a promise, it is instantly in a pending state, and then it can go into those other two states depending on if it was successful. So as you can see here, pending means the promise is being processed, resolved, means the promise has been fulfilled successfully and rejected means the promise has been broken or failed to be successfully uh, fulfilled successfully. Four more things to kind of understand about promises is the relationship between time and work. Uh, and we'll go over that. Promise chaining, which I think I did in my other example, but this, this one's a little better because it actually follows the same thing that we were doing before. Um, so it uses the dot then handler to chain multiple promises together. Promises, unlike uh, callbacks, also has error handling and we can use that with the catch uh, handler uh, to catch errors or rejected promises and have it do something specific when an error happens. And then we also have the finally handler, which returns uh, a promise when the original promise is resolved. It doesn't matter whether it is uh, successfully resolved or rejected. I guess resolved is probably, maybe I should say fulfilled. Uh, because this will even execute whether it is resolved or rejected. It's just always something that is ran. So let's jump right in to a confusing example. So for this, because we want to be able to simulate a failed promise or an error, we're going to actually say, okay, well, it's really hard to make a character if you don't have a core book. Now, uh, you could consider the core book, D&D, uh, &D, the PHP, you can consider it um, uh, the Pathfinder core rule book or you know dungeon crawl classics rule book i don't know if it's called rule book 
uh, core rule book or whatever, uh, whatever you want. It's it's whatever book you use to create the character. That we're gonna call that the core rule book, or yeah, core rule book's good. So we're gonna say we're gonna create a variable that can actually be changed. I don't think we need to actually have a change, but we'll, we'll do it anyway. Um, so we're gonna call this have core. Not court, have core, and we're gonna set it to true at first. You know, me, like so. And then we're gonna create a little function that simply uh, is going to create our promise and either have a state where it's rejected or a state where it's resolved that's returned. So we're gonna go ahead and call this, uh, we'll just call it PC again. And we'll do this as an arrow function. No extreme reason for that. Just, I like to kind of shift it up to show you that a lot of times they can be interchangeable. Um, and then our arrow function, and then this. Um, and since the variable, we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so what we want to have for this is we're going to have the time, which is the milliseconds, uh, we'll pass into it. And we will also have the work to be done or the basically the function that is going to be done. Um, so da, 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 da. let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to do time. I'm trying to think I might now I'll leave it this way. Time and let's do work. So basically what we're setting up here is kind of a more automated where we don't have to do the set timeout uh, structure every time. Um, basically we're just going to pass in the variables. Uh, we're going to pass in a function or we're going to pass in our milliseconds and it will actually create our our set timeout function for us. Um, so, oh, actually, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're going to return a promise based off of the this thing, based off of what we're going to do. Uh, that's really kind of confusing, but let's, let's just do this, R-E-T-U-R-N, and I will explain as we go. So, to create a new function or a new promise, we use the new keyword and uppercase P. So we do a new promise and inside this promise we are going to uh, pass in the promise states resolved and reject. So error and fulfilled or whatever you want to call it. Uh, R-E-S-O-L-V-E -E, comma R-E-J-E-C-T and because uh, it's an arrow function, we need our arrow, and then of course we need our actual body. So this is basically what we're going to have. So to simulate everything being hunky dory and good to go, we're going to do a check against have core. If have core is true, then we're going to go ahead and say, yep, you can process, you can do all the stuff that we've done in our previous video of creating our character. So we're going to do if, and we're going to do have core. And if you do have the core, then we know we're going to do all the good stuff. In other words, it means we don't have the core, so it's we're not able to do it. So we're going to do ELSE, and we're going to go ahead and do our reject. So because we have our resolve and reject part here, we can actually say uh, our reject, our e reject, and we'll just pass console log message and do that and that. And you know what, I'm gonna copy and paste this so I don't have to type it out. Because <laughs> like I said, I'm a slow typer. So there we go. So if we don't have the core, it's going to return the reject because uh, as you see we're returning our promise and it's going to be the resol resolved or the rejected side 
So we're going to return the reject, which is going to output, we do not have the core book handy. Other words, if we do have the core, uh, core book handy, then we're going to go ahead and do our set timeout. So set timeout, and let's go ahead and what the heck did I do there? I'm not sure why that has that. That must be a template for set timeout. Um, so we're going to do set timeout. We're going to do our uh, function. What are we passing? We're not passing anything into it. Uh, we have that there. Um, we could do this all on one line, I think. So let's do if if the if we have the core rule book, then we can go ahead and do our thing. So we're going to do, we're going to set our resolve, which is the built in function of a promise. That's what it just has in it. And we're going to go ahead and resolve. We're going to do work, right? And then do, do, do right here. I feel like I'm don't have enough parentheses. Let me just double check my notes. Work. I feel like there's another parenthesis here. There is the. Uh, wait a minute. So, oh, work. Work is a, a function that we're passing in. That's why I felt like I didn't have them. And then right here will be our time. So as you can see here, this is the stuff we're passing in. So if if we do have the core rule book, then it's going to go ahead and do this, which is going to run our function or our anonymous function, which will be the work we have for it to do. And this will be the time that it does it in. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and that's basically all we need for that. So now, what I want to do, uh, we're at 12 minutes. Let's, what is the best way to do this? I'm going to copy and paste the whole thing and show all the steps of this. And it also, the reason I'm going to do this because it also has our, our um, error reporting so we can handle our error and it also has an example for our finally so if we come in here we can see we're basically doing the same thing it's a little less confusing than the callback one because here we're calling pc which is this guy up here we're passing in time and then we're passing in our function which is basically our console log and that is it now with a promise we also have the dot then which says, okay, after this is done, then do this, then do this, then do this, then do this, so on and so forth. So as you can see, once it's done doing this one, it'll pass on to the then, and it will basically do the same thing. The then is still gonna call the PC because that's the main thing we're calling here. If you look, this, this uh, uh, basically the dot, the pending, I can't remember what it's called, um, is attached to that. So it's still going to do the PC, but now it's going to pass in this information. So as you can see, the then here, I have, this is step two, because there's nine steps in this. We're going to return the, we're going to pass it the two, 2,000 milliseconds, and then console log out. Then we're going to continue on doing all these other ones. So if an issue happens where it can't do this and it gets to the PC here and it's like, oh, I can't do this because when I do this, I get the rejected result, it will jump all the way down straight to the catch clause here saying, Houston, we have a problem. And then the finally will always go, uh, which is the this will always display. So hopefully that makes a little sense. I, I think if we run it, then we can kind of go through the individual steps of it. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. 
I just wanted to try and get these two videos done as quickly as possible because they're based off the previous two. So let's go ahead and run it. We're going to shrink this down so it's less pretty. Uh, go ahead and F12 and we'll stop. And we'll go ahead and execute and you'll see it. It's going to do the exact same thing as before. So we're going to see it run. Elf was selected a second later. We have wizard a second later. We have background a second later. We have this. There we go. Then we have half a second later. Then we have, what was it? Two, one, two, and finally three. And then of course we have the, this will always display. Just to make that stand out a little more, I'm gonna do this. Do, do, uh, console dot, whoa, that's not the case. Uh, C-O-N-S-O-L-E, console console.log and we'll just have it do a blank just to throw in an extra space and we'll do C there and we'll do it there as well can you tell all my the the thing I wrote some of my original code in actually has four four spaces per thing <laughs> so uh, instead of two for each tab it, it used four so anyway here we go um, as you can see so what happened is it passed up here to the set timeout the time was 1000 and then it did the character race was selected then it waited two seconds or one second from when it was first executed and kind of worked its way down each one dependent kind of upon the prior one but only kind of because once again if we came down here and said do 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 where did I call it well I'm calling it right there so if we actually came down here and did another c o n s o l console console dot log and do something like all done with the a b o v you'll see that this actually is executed once again before all that other stuff is because these simply have a promise and each one of these have that promise saying okay I'm doing this if this doesn't succeed then I'm gonna fail and it'll instantly go down to their catch free our catch catch clause so if we run this once again I forgot to stick that in there maybe we'll even stick a space here too uh, just to make it a little more legible so you can see it actually finishes before our first thing even is triggered we're all done before it even starts because it's just queuing up all those different things All right, and then of course we always see the finally block. Um, so I know this is confusing. I know callbacks are confusing. Async and await actually, believe it or not, gets a little less confusing and a little easier to see what's going on. Um, so uh, I think between this and the previous video, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover with promises so hopefully it wasn't way too confusing for you if if you do have questions or comments if you want to tell me where i was wrong and stuff i do not profess to be the you know know-it-all everything promises callbacks and async and await um i'm just trying to share what i do know with you guys but if you have any comments or insights that you want to share feel free to do that um, so thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Click the little notification bell. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord and my other channels. And don't forget to tell other people about my channel. Come check it out if they like what they see, they can sub. And that is it, my friends. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.